The Dodge Challenger is the name of three different generations of automobiles, two of those being pony cars, produced by American automobile manufacturer Dodge. However, the first use of the Challenger name by Dodge was in 1959 for marketing a value version of the full-sized Coronet Silver Challenger. From model years 1970 to 1974, the first-generation Dodge Challenger pony car was built using the Chrysler E-Platform in hardtop and convertible body styles sharing major components with the Plymouth Barracuda, too. The second generation, from model years 1978 to 1983, was a badge-engineered Mitsubishi Gallant Lambda slash Sapporo, 3, a coupe version of an economical compact car. The third and current generation is a pony car that was introduced in early 2008 originally as a rival to the evolved fifth-generation Ford Mustang and the fifth-generation Chevrolet Camaro, 4. In November 2021, Stellantis announced that 2023 model year would be the final model year for both the LD Dodge Charger and LA Dodge Challenger, as the company will focus its future plans on electric vehicles rather than fossil fuel-powered vehicles, especially with tougher automotive emission standards of being rolled out and required by the Environmental Protection Agency for the 2023 model year, 5. Introduced in the autumn of 1969 for the 1970 model year, 7, the Challenger was one of two Chrysler e-body cars, the other being the slightly smaller Plymouth Barracuda. Positioned to compete against the Mercury Cougar and Pontiac Firebird in the upper end of the pony car market segment, 8, it was a rather late response to the Ford Mustang, which debuted in April 1964. 9. Even so, Chrysler intended the new Challenger as the most potent pony car ever, 10. And like the less expensive Barracuda, it was available in a staggering number of trim and option levels, and with virtually every engine in Chrysler's inventory, 11. The first usage of the Challenger name was for a trim package in 1959 called the Dodge Silver Challenger which was a two-door coupe only. The Challenger's longer wheelbase, larger dimensions, and more luxurious interior were prompted by the launch of the 1967 Mercury Cougar, likewise, a bigger, more luxurious, and more expensive pony car aimed at affluent young American buyers. 12. The 110 in, 2,800 mm, wheelbase was 2 in, 51 mm, longer than the Barracudas, and the Dodge differed substantially in its sheet metal, much as the Cougar differed from the shorter wheelbase Mustang. Air conditioning and a rear window defogger were optional, 13, with 1971 being the sole exception, the front ends of both cars differed from each other in that the Challenger had four headlights and the Barracuda had only two, a trend replicated by offerings from Chrysler's rivals. The exterior design was penned by Carl Cameron, who was also responsible for the exterior designs of the 1966 Dodge Charger. Cameron based the 1970 Challenger grill on an older sketch of a stillborn 1966 Charger prototype that was to have a turbine engine. The pony car segment was already declining by the time the Challenger arrived. Sales fell dramatically after 1970, and those sales rose for the 1973 model year with over 27,800 cars being sold. Challenger production ceased midway through the 1974 model year. A total of 165,437 first-generation Challengers were sold. For its introductory model year the Challenger was available in two series, Challenger and Challenger R-T, and three models, two-door hardtop, special edition two-door hardtop, or convertible, 14 better source needed, the base model was the Challenger with either an inline, 6 or V8 engine. 
The special edition hardtop, available on either the base Challenger or on the R-T, added a number of appearance, convenience, and comfort features, 15, produced for the 1970 model year only. This more luxurious SE specification included as standard a vinyl roof with a southeast medallions on the pillars, a smaller, formal rear window, leather and vinyl bucket seats, and an overhead interior console that contained three warning lights, door ajar, low fuel, and seat belts. Dot 16, the standard engine on. The base model was a 225 cu in, 3.7L, straight, 6. The standard engine on the higher trim models was a 318 cu in, 5.2L, V8 with a two-barrel carburetor. For 1970, the optional engines included the 340 and 383 cu in, 5.6 and 6.3L as well as the 440 and 426 CU in, 7.2 and 7.0 L, V8S, all with a standard 3-speed manual transmission, except for the 290 horsepower, 216.3 kilowatts, 383 CU in. Engine, which was available only with the Torque Flight automatic transmission. A 4-speed manual was optional on all engines except the 225 CU in, 3.7L, inline, 6 and the 2-barrel 383 CU in, 6.3L, V8. The performance model was the Challenger R-T, road-slash-track, with a 383 CU in, 6.3L, Magnum, V8, rated at 335 horsepower, 250 kilowatts, 300 horsepower, 224 kilowatts for 1971, due to a drop in compression. The standard transmission was a three-speed manual. Optional R-T engines were the 375 horsepower, 280 kilowatts, 440 CU in, 7.2 L, Magnum, the 390 horsepower, 291 kilowatts, 440 cu in, 7.2 L, 6 pack, and the 426 cu in, 7.0 L. Hemi rated at 425 horsepower, 431 PS, 317 kilowatts, at 5000 RPM, and 490 lbft, 664 Nm of torque at 4,000 RPM. The R-T was available in either the hardtop or convertible. The Challenger R-T came with a rally instrument cluster that included a 150 miles per hour, 240 kilometers per hour, speedometer, an 8,000 RPM tachometer and an oil pressure gauge, 17. The shaker hood scoop was not available after 1971. A mid-year introduction was the low-priced Challenger Deputy, a coupe with fixed rear quarter windows lacking some of the base car's trim with fixed rear side glass as the most notable identifier. 18. This model was named after a sheriff-type character that was featured in television commercials by Dodge at the time. 19. A special model only available for the 1970 model year was the Challenger T-A, Trans AM, racing homologation car. In order to race in the Sports Car Club of America's Trans American Sedan Championship Trans AM, Dodge built a street version of its race car, just like Plymouth with its Plymouth Cuda AR, which it called the Dodge Challenger T-A, Trans AM. Although the race cars ran a distroked version of the 340, street versions took the 340 and added a trio of two-barrel carburetors atop an aluminum intake manifold, creating the 346 pack. Dodge rated the 346 pack at 290 horsepower, 
216 kilowatts, only 15 horsepower, 11 kilowatts, more than the original 340 engine, which also had the same rating as the Camaro Z-28 and Ford Boss 302 Mustang. Air came in through a suitcase-sized air scoop molded into the pinned-down, hinged matte black fiberglass hood. A low-restriction dual-outlet exhaust ran to the stock muffler location, then reversed direction to exit in chrome-tipped, megaphone outlets in front of the rear wheels. Options included a torque flight automatic or pistol-grip Hurst-shifted four-speed transmission, 3.55 to 1 or 3.90 to 1 gear ratios, as well as manual or power steering. Front disc brakes were standard. The special rally suspension used heavy-duty parts and increased the rate of the rear springs. The T-A was one of the first U.S. muscle cars to fit different-sized tires at the front and rear, E60X15 Goodyear Polyglas in the front, and G60X15 on the rear axle, 20, 21. The modified chamber elevated the tail enough to clear the rear tires and its side exhaust outlets. Thick dual side stripes, bold ID graphics, a fiberglass ducktail rear spoiler, and a fiberglass front spoiler were also included. The interior was identical to other Challengers. Dodge contracted Ray Caldwell's Autodynamics in Marblehead, Massachusetts to run the factory Trans AM team. Sam Posey drove the number 77, sublime, painted car that Caldwell's team built from a car taken off a local dealer's showroom floor. When the number 76 was completed mid-season from a chassis provided by Dan Gurney's All-American Racers, Posey alternated between the two. Both cars ran the final two races, with Posey in the number 77. Ronnie Bucknum drove the number 76 at Seattle, Washington, and Tony Adamowicz drove it at Riverside, California. The Challenger T-A's scored a few top three finishes, but lack of a development budget and the short-lived Keith Black built 303 CU in 5.0L engines led to Dodge leaving the series at season's end. The street version suffered from severe understeer in fast corners, largely due to the smaller front tires. A total of 2,399 T-as were made. A 1971 model using the 340 engine with a four-barrel carburetor was planned and appeared in advertising, but was not produced since Dodge had withdrawn from the race series.